Hey guys, this is Jim, KN4YCD, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. So today I want to go through basic filter 101. What are the four kinds of filters that we typically talk about in amateur radio? And what do they look like? What are they supposed to do? So without further ado, let's pop over to the whiteboard and take a look at some of these things. Okay, so I mentioned there are four different kinds of filters. Let's take a look at what they look like and talk about them. And there will be a bonus filter at the end of this video. Stick with me. So the first filter I want to talk about is a low pass filter. And it does exactly what it sounds like. We have some signal here. And anything below a given point is passed. And anything above that point is filtered out to some extent. Now, none of these filters typically have a square shoulder. That's what this piece is here where it starts to roll off. That's the shoulder. There's no filter I've ever seen, and I could be wrong, there's no filter I've ever seen that has a square roll-off. It just isn't the case. Now, it may have severely steeper shoulders than my, my terrible drawing, but it's going to have some sort of shoulder like this. And this is for demonstration purposes anyway. Your mileage may vary. Void were prohibited. So when we talk about a filter, and let's pick on 7 megahertz. When we talk about a filter, when we get to 3 dB down from the primary signal level, our original signal level, that is the filter's cutoff point. So if this is seven megahertz here, anything below seven megahertz is gonna pass. So that would be noted by this area here in green. This RF signal is all gonna pass. Our filter's ignoring it. It's going, it's passing through our filter, low pass. So low being this way, and that all passes. Anything above it, not going to get passed. We typically categorize filters based on where that 3 dB roll-off actually is. So when this level of signal here is 3 dB down from this level of signal, that's our roll-off frequency. So anything below that is going to get filtered, and this is all frequency dependent. It's filter dependent. It's based on what the design of the filter is, and there are multiple different designs to make a low-pass filter. And that's the same for any kind of filter. That's what a low-pass filter is doing. We're allowing the lower RF frequencies to pass, and we're filtering out the higher frequencies. And depending on the filter design and the frequency and the amount of power, um, how much filtration you get could vary a little bit. So that is a low pass filter. His opposite number is a high pass filter. And the high pass filter looks something like this. Same kind of deal except 180 degrees. And here we have the same kind of thing. Wherever this notional 3 dB fall off point is, that is the cutoff frequency. So based on our last example, seven megahertz, here is a seven megahertz high pass filter. So anything above this seven megahertz point is going to be allowed to pass all this and anything below it, you shall not pass high pass. All right. High pass filter roll off. All that stuff works the same way as the low pass. All right, let's move on. The next kind of filter that we talk about, or you've heard talked about is a band pass filter. So a band pass filter is going to look something like this. And it may be a steeper curve. It may be a shallower curve. Again, this is all examples. And wherever that 3 dB point is on this filter, that is our cutoff frequencies for what we're going to allow to pass in this guy. Yes, I know my lines don't all perfectly intersect. Just roll with me on it. So if this is a 7 megahertz passband filter, we're going to assume that 7 megahertz is probably the middle of the passband. And to some extent, it's going to allow signal below and above 7 megahertz to pass. So this could be something, again, based on filter design, could be something like 6,800 6, kilohertz, 6 6.8 megahertz, up to 74 megahertz, right? It, it just depends on how the filter is designed. Um, so this stuff here in the middle is what's actually going to pass. This area between these two 3 dB roll-offs on either side right? This is our pass band. 
All right, this is the band of frequencies that we're gonna to allow to pass through the filter. The filter itself is called a band pass filter. I think these are questions on the general and or the extra test, so FYI. You can get confused about them. The pass band is what we're allowing through. The filter is called a band pass. All right, that's a band pass filter. And much like the high and low pass filters, this guy has an opposite number as well. His opposite number is called Mr. Notch filter, and he looks something like this. And then at again at this at this mythical 3 dB roll-off point, this is our notched out area. Now he works completely different, completely opposite from the way the pass band filter works, because or the excuse me, I see I got myself confused, band pass filter. On the notch filter, this is what we're allowing to pass is above and below our frequency of interest. Or these, these are our frequencies of interest. This is the frequency we do not want. Do not want, zero out of 10, no. So this is a notch filter. And again, he does the exact opposite thing of a bandpass filter. So that is the four basic kinds of filters. Um, you've seen this on your, on your radios, um, and I'm going to speak ICOM specific because that's what I have at hand. ICOM has what they call twin passband tuners. And if I'm on a given frequency, I have two different knobs and I can adjust that passband just like we're looking at right here. And I can bring it down and widen it out so that if there's an adjacent station, either below or above the frequency that I'm trying to monitor, or have a QSO on, I can pretty much notch them out, and I'm only uh, I'm only listening to what I want. So it two notch filters, one on either side, create a pass band. Pretty cool, huh? That's kind of a semi bonus point. Your bonus filter, because I'm a given kind of guy, and I just want to show you this. It's not specifically a different kind of filter. It's just kind of like you know, filter secret. If you have a low pass filter and you have a high pass filter, what have we created here? We've created Franken filter. No, what we've created is a, what does it look like? We've created a notch filter. That's exactly what we've done. We've got our low pass filter. We're allowing these frequencies below our notional 3 dB cutoff to go through. And this is notched out down to some lower signal level. So that's the, this is the notch filter and we're, we're filtering out, we're notching out that stuff. So if you're trying to create a notch filter manually, if you're creating filters, field day is an excellent time to get your filter Kung Fu on. You can actually take a high pass filter and a low pass filter, join them together and get some variation of a notch filter. Now, it's a whole lot easier to do it on your radio. And I mentioned ICOM. Yesu has the feature. Kenwood has the feature. All of them have the feature. It's just implemented in slightly different ways, I'm sure. Flex has the feature. I talked about it briefly in the Flex radio video I did a couple weeks ago. We can create what Flex calls tunable notch filters, which is I click and drag and create a filter that's X kilohertz wide, and I can make a second one X kilohertz wide, and I can move those and put them wherever I want. Visually, it's the same thing, essentially. The difference with the flex thing is I can move the filter with my ICOM, for example. The filter is gonna be adjacent to wherever my VFO is actually set. So that's the big difference there. Other than that, um, they, they do pretty much the same function. So that's it for today. If you would give me a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so you get notified whenever I post any new content. 73, y'all. Have a great day.